Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving game masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! You know, just once, I would, I would love to see a movie where a scientist is actually like really happy with the way his work goes into the world, mm-hmm. or he's not like, "I made a war robot, and you're using it for war, and how dare you? This is a war robot. How dare you use it for?" I'm tired of this Einstein, this knockoff Einstein shtick that happens in every movie. <gasps> what do you mean? You're using my invention of the kill blaster? <laughs> to kill and blast? Yeah, fuck. Yeah, we are, dumbass. I yeah. mean You be, know that laser gun that you put on it? What yeah, else did you yeah. think it would be used yeah, for? Be proud of your fucking work, man. Were you just do you think we're just gonna cut through like we're gonna go rescue someone and cut through your know, steel rooms? No, Jesus no, it's just fuck, man. I'm so kill someone sick of that fucking trope. <laughs> well, for me, as a podcaster doing this show with you, one thing that frequently makes me sad, uh it, it in, at increasing frequencies as we do the show mm-hmm. is uh it's a little soul crushing at times when we pick these movies and we go and watch them and at first you're like yeah i remember this movie this movie might be okay and you go back <laughs> i loved this movie as a kid and now i'm seeing all of these films from my youth that i still held in high esteem because i hadn't seen them since they came out i'm so scared to see flight of the navigator I'm me too. Oh, I see, wrote I, this note right I here. I watched what that every about couple Flight of years. Oh, did you? Yeah. I watched what that every couple of years. It's, yeah. it, it's fine. It's good. It's fine. I'm sorry. This movie was bad. Yeah. Oh, by the way, <laughs> uh, I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm disappointed. <laughs> Nathaniel. <laughs> and and uh, this week we are, uh, we're doing Short Circuit because you voted for it. Yeah. Even Thanks. though I, I asked you not to. I was really hoping not for you. explorers. No, I know. No, I know no, no, you were no, no. To wait, me. I'm still talking to my audience, Dusty. <laughs> One second. You are not the star of this show. No, 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 no. But I'm talking to Your the people audience, I can reach. You bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got my pizza. I don't care what the fuck happens now. Uh, <laughs> You're like, I'm done. I'm out. I got my pizza. I, I asked, I begged, and so many of you commented, and so many of you said, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna vote for this one. And I'm like, that's not what I have you here for. You are bad people. I'm very disappointed in all of you. I voted for short circuit. Oh, so I regret it. You, so you are one of the problems. I thought it was a good movie when I was six. <laughs> I was. So I will say this: hoping for <laughs> it, it's, it still had moments. It okay. There, are, it has some good lines. That's about it. Laser I, lips. Your mama was a snowblower. I quoted that line so many times yeah. when I was a kid. We all did. Yeah. And, and as props go, they did a really good job. Oh, I yeah. mean, with and, uh, with and, the RC and mm-hmm. with puppetry. The the puppetry was really good. The the voice acting for the for Johnny was really good. And and there's a reason why it's it's better than what it should have been. There are a lot of things that changed over the course of this movie from from inception to being filmed. And I don't think we have enough time to go into all of them, but I'm going to try and hit a good number of them tonight for you guys. So. I, I will say I liked Ben. I liked his you know, constant mixing of the metaphors. He had the best lines oh, yeah. of the whole movie. As, as such a racist stereotype as that character was, he actually he he turned it around in a few he stole times. The show. He did. There was a line that I love. So where are you from? Uh, What was it? California. Mm-hmm. Oh, but where's your family from? Oh, yes. Pittsburgh. (laughs) So there is some history with his character. So originally, Bronson uh, Pinko, Pincho, uh, uh, from Cousin Balky. Yes, Cousin Balky. Yeah. Was supposed to play that part. It was supposed to be a white guy, and he was supposed to play that part, but he was contracted into playing Perfect Stranger. So he had to bow out. So they went ahead and got Fisher Stevens, and there was some the plague arguing <laughs> about uh, creative direction with that character. The studio came back and said, "We would like to do an Indian descent." I, I, I'm, I'm sorry if I forget the I don't have the right nomenclature on that one. Um, 
<clears throat> so getting all nervous. They uh, no, I just have a screwed up throat from being in Phoenix for five or six days. So they so said you just made a Phoenix. cool sound, a, a screwed up throat. I, I want to remix that sound. And put it like, <laughs> <laughs> so they said we want to do this. We want to change it. And he was like, uh, I don't really feel comfortable in doing that. And they said, fine, you don't get the part. They got someone else. That person bottomed out. They came back to Fisher Stevens, and he said, fine, I'll do what you want. Now, Fisher, apparently being a heavy method actor at the time, he went into, he actually went to India and, like, immersed himself in the local customs and and being in India, was hanging out with a lot of families, and he got so good at, at, at portraying someone from that area of the world that there was a uh uh a an actor by the Aziz name Aziz sorry I believe. I'm sorry? You're talking about uh, the No, 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 I'll get to oh, that okay. though. But there was a Bollywood actor named of uh Havid Jeffrey and apparently everyone in India thought that this was him. They they he had to go out on the air and say no, I did not do this movie. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's rad. Yeah. That's rad. Now, you just made comment about Aziz. Yeah. Yeah. He the two of them sat down, had a long talk, and, and this was the, recently. Yeah, it was yeah. like 2015. I was going to say, Aziz was like what three? Yeah, it was when about was... 2015. They had a <laughs> a very civil conversation, and basically, what came out of it was uh, he did not like blame Fisher Stevens for doing this role. He he didn't get angry at him for having like the stereotypical. Indian Why would he? Because it's Hollywood, and there's like, oh, you're your white guy. They put they put brown face on you, basically. Oh, he was. Yeah, they darkened. He was. They, he they, was. they put oh, him in brown face. Now I see why everyone's calling it racist. I'm like, why? He did a great job. Yeah, he he dyed his hair black. <laughs> he oh, let it grow long. I didn't know that. And put brown makeup on, and then they actually even whitened his teeth a little bit. So those were very white teeth. I did notice because yes, everyone did. else in the '80s did not have they, those white he teeth. Dyed his all. beard everything because if huh. you look at him in this movie. And then look at him in Hackers. There is not a, a name I, rec- I recognized in the whole thing. So. Oh, yeah. Gutenberg? You, you didn't I vaguely recognize him? Okay. Please Three Minute and a Baby. W- which one was he in this movie? Steve Gutenberg was, was the, the, the nerd. One that made Johnny oh, Five. they're using my guns to kill people. Oh, oh. fucking Crosby? Yeah. Yeah, screw him. And, and, then, the, the and then Ali Sheedy. Ali, Ali Sheedy. Sheedy. Breakfast Club? Yeah. yeah. She was the goth. Yeah, the goth girl in Breakfast Club. The problem girl. You know, Fisher Stevens, I, caricature aside, he really was the best actor, I think, in this yeah, movie. Yeah, like, he did say that uh, there is there there is on table for a third movie. They no, want to redo no, it. No. And he has said, no. if, they, if they ask me, uh, I'm not going to re-portray that character again. It would be better just to let uh, either someone of Indian descent or go in a different direction. So there's this great scene at the beginning, right, where he's where he's blowing uh, up up the, the the jeeps and then you the said armored, blowing, and I thought that was going to go yeah, in another here, direction. Actually. I just was going to let it <laughs> I'll go. I'll get to that later. How the machine <laughs> loves a woman, and if you type in machine love, oh, you will but, find some fun things. Now that's giving me a tremendous Woody right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have the strangest boner. Did you notice that when the tank was going through the field at the beginning, like it rolled over this field of flowers because that's what it started on was, you know, these flowers. I did notice that. And yeah. the flowers yeah. are fine. Yeah. Yeah. Those flowers spring back up. It's like in- flowers are fucking. No, no, no. <laughs> Those are American tough ass flowers. <laughs> okay. Speaking they of. They pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. Yeah, they did. <laughs> speaking of the beginning. By their one stamens. Of, <laughs> one of the only good things I do have to say about this movie. Huh. The intro sequence with mm-hmm. the music it and the good. mechanical yeah. bits oh, yeah. in synchronization with each other. That was pretty solid. There were parts of this movie that were really solid. Um, as far as as far as all the set dressing, all the production, this was an excellent movie. Well, and where they, was it filmed? It was filmed uh, up here in Portland. And Actually, it's like yeah, Astoria. Yeah. 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 It was filmed no. up by the Goonies house. There, there was yeah. some in Astoria. There was also some down the Columbia Gorge. I saw um, It's the house. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the Vista House. Uh, there's some out where I go shooting by the Bridge of the Gods. That's, yep. that's what you're mm-hmm. looking at there. Uh, what is it? Clackamas Falls or something like that? What do they call it? Klamath. Klamath Falls, yeah. yeah. And then there's, uh, I think there was some desert out there, too. I, I definitely yeah. saw the Goonies neighborhood. Yeah. I, I know that neighborhood very well. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they were out in the desert, when they were hiding, that ultimately was the soundstage. But yeah, it was uh. supposed to be the high desert. Now, before we started recording, Matthew, you had a good quip about the modernity of this movie and based on its location 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't like setups like that, but I'm going to run with it just for you, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> Some of us operate a little more subtle. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, Stephanie, Stephanie in the 1980s, if you changed her hair, could have been a modern woman in Portland, Oregon. She was yeah. wearing blue jeans and a dress, cowboy boots, and three shirts. She drove an organic grain food truck yeah. and ran an animal shelter. That is the yeah. most... Has Portland not changed since and the then, 80s? And, is that what this is? And dated a guy in a band that had a gas guzzling car. Not only that, but was... And a little obvious. <laughs> and not only that, but oh, the man. enemy was an out-of-state tech company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From yeah. Washington! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing well, good comes we, across the water. Fuck normal- you... Normally we hate California, but also, you know, fuck Washington, I guess. And, and fuck you, because I live up there. <laughs> I stand by what I said. <laughs> <laughs> so as I said earlier, this movie from inception to delivery, it actually... Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see. I got my fingers up. I'm flipping both of them off right now. But that was good. That was really good, actually. Wow. You know, this movie was a lot funnier before drone strikes were a thing. <laughs> you have this oh. autonomous fucking robot. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Anyway, but yeah, I mean, it was probably Something a lot about Inception. Your <laughs> village goes up in flames. Yeah. So from the beginning of 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 writing it, the director actually had something completely different in mind. He wanted to have uh, an, a human brain go into Johnny Five, and that's where he becomes Absolutely sentient not. in that in that aspect where he gets when he gets hit by a lightning by the lightning bolt, the brain kind of got kick started and remembers. Oh, hey, I was human at one point in time. Didn't they do that with RoboCop? Yeah, basically. Uh, Yeah. But the production company said, and the studio said, well, that's a little too grisly. We don't really want to do that because we don't want to have to film a brain going into this, you know, computer. Plus, we've already dropped like $3 million of our $15 million budget on these 15 robots that we're going to destroy most of them during the filming. So we don't want to do that. So make it something else. There were several storylines that were going to go, that went back. Are and you forth. telling me that between Dr. Pepper, Macintosh, Alaska Airlines, Colgate, Brawny, Aura Ida Potatoes, Duracell, Campbell Soup, and Charmin? Did you mention only, Coleman? What? Did you mention Coleman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They only got fifteen million to make this movie. Yes. Because that's a lot of endorsements. I'm that, sure they could have fifteen million dollars as a budget for the movie. That was disappointed it. in you, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> they, I think they just gave him like a catering, like, oh, we're going to drink, let you drink as much Dr. Pepper as you want. So they didn't get the script that they want. Where are you going? No, with that? no, I was just saying that it was supposed to be a vastly different movie. It was supposed to be more, it was supposed to be a lot more gritty, grittier. Uh, it was supposed to be darker. Uh, Johnny five was supposed to go on this kind of like techno rampage of like, I was human once and, and now I'm not. And, like kill everybody that yeah, he Robocop. came across, almost, almost like RoboCop. You know, I don't like seeing animals in movies, old movies. Oh my god, I have this. Every game. one of those animals are dead. I have this game that I play every time I'm watching a movie with my wife, or mm-hmm. even just you know someone that I'm drinking or whatever, hanging out with. An animal will come on about. You see that dog? That's a cute dog. That dog is dead. Yeah, <laughs> I do that with old people too. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> you I'm see like, that lady? The, the old, the, the, the old, the old people who have. Did you leave the weed in the glove box, though? The grass. The grass. <laughs> that was a good line. Yeah. <laughs> there was also talk of uh, they were going to have uh, aliens who gave Johnny his Johnny Five his intelligence. But in the end, the bolt, <sighs> they kept coming back to the, Here's the, the thing. The, the lightning I, I actually bottle. have something on that. I did not like that it was lightning. Mm-hmm. I think it would have been way better if he was thrown into like a recursion loop. Okay. And they didn't Frankenstein it like he had to solve his way out of a problem, a Kobayashi Maru for which there is no solving. And that allowed him to expand. I I thought it was a cheesy sentience. And that's what the director thought, too. The the director's done done a number of movies and he was like, guys, I really don't want to do this. And when the writers came back and said, why are we doing this? He said the only thing he said was this is what the studio wants. And it was dropped right then and there. Like no one asked anything more at that point. This is what the studio wants. And unfortunately, he was probably not James Cameron, so he couldn't yeah. just say, no. I'm going to do what I want. No, the director was John McDonald Batum. Who, what else he's done? He has actually had a, a few movies under his under his belt that were good for the time. 
It's Saturday Night Fever in 1977. Okay. Is that why that was on the TV? He already had the rights (laughs) to it. Uh, There's a lot of his stuff going on in the background. Uh, Push your shit, man. (laughs) uh, Dracula from 1979. Uh, Blue Thunder from 1983. (laughs) Which I do like. It is a very linear story, but I like it. War Games with Matthew Broderick and Alice Sweeney. Yeah. We should do that next. Uh, And then follow along with this one. Yeah. And then Richard Dreyfus and Emilio Estevez in Stakeout in 1987. And that's, oh, that's been it. That was a Polly Shore song. song. <laughs> <laughs> I liked when Russia was still the enemy. Does anyone else miss that? Yeah, that was yeah. that was like um, Red Dawn, the original Red Dawn. Yeah. Was, I, I was like great. having the Russian enemy. The you only know? time I haven't liked the Russians being the enemy was in that fan film that somebody made for Indiana Jones. Uh, it was something with the crystal skulls. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't good. Yeah, it was. I saw no. it on YouTube. It was a horrible yeah. fan <laughs> film. But they went from the Nazis to the Russians, and it was. It just. It lost it. Was Russia the enemy in this? No, no. But it, it was just no. the undercurrent of the time that he was going to show the commies with this new robot. Well, there was that, but yeah. their big fear throughout the whole movie was that the robot was going to go crazy and just start shooting everything up. Yes, which is interesting that. They're capitalists. They're they're there to make money. I would have been afraid that their big fear was that it should it would have been more plausible if they were afraid that a corporation was going to grab their robot before they did. But they're well, all like military. The, military. You, still, you still have the lawsuits. And that's not that wasn't even death. military. That was a private security, security firm, firm until the very end yeah. somehow. Yeah, and then suddenly, yeah, it was really strange. A but, shitty concern. Yeah. I, if that guy, I like, I've worked security yeah. before, like, and not just in bars, but like armed security. If if that guy blew his whistle like that, he just would have disappeared somewhere on a road trip. I mean, he just wouldn't have come. I don't know, man. He walked off the job. No one saw him. <laughs> he, he said he wanted to go visit the desert. I, he thought he was a general. I honestly think we're better off. You know? But you also have yeah. to remember this this film came out in 1986. We were still we were at the, the, the tail end of the Cold War tensions. There was still a lot going on with that. And there were a lot of movies that came out in that time frame that were just even like Matthew said, the underscore of the commies. The commies are going to get you. They're, I mean even even in in I think in Goonies he makes comment about, "Oh, they're Russians." You know, the Fratellis. "Oh, they're Russians." I think. There were a lot of movies that were like, "Oh, the Russians, the Russians, this, the Russians, that." I remember. I'm going to sell War. it to the commies. Yeah. I, I, I just, so. I'm just saying, I, I miss, yeah, being angry at the Russians. Well, I'm I miss angry it. at the Russians right now, but you know. yeah, you can be again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, at every level, not you know, cozying up to them on oh, one just, level. Just oh, them being okay. a constant phantom threat. Yeah, mm-hmm. essentially being, or as they called it, the Red Devil, which was essentially us saying that. Parents would put their kids tonight, say, you know, be good or the devil's going to get you or be good or the commies are going to grab you. Well, that that even goes back to in the in the 50s. Um, so when, we can when dive quote, into the socialism aspect. Now, right? <laughs> when uh, when the Red Scare started, <laughs> uh, because we put we as a nation put in God, we trust on the dollar bill because uh, the commies were godless heathens. And that's where in God, we trust was put on the bill. The more you know. Yeah, I like being a godless heathen. It is pretty cool, although I wouldn't call myself a heathen. I know actual heathens. I follow like heathenism and whatnot, so I can't take credit for that. I have a question. Nun soup. Nun soup. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh god, he really did have the best lines he did. in the whole thing. Yeah, he, which question? He had Duster? good comic timing, is what he had. Yeah. yeah, I maybe it was because I just I, I had the movie on in the background and I wasn't paying a lot of attention because I know this movie doesn't hold up. But well, why there, would you? I mean, it's just a podcast. Was there any? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did my deep dive, but was there anywhere that, that when they explained uh, the nuclear aspect of Johnny Five because? The actual acronym for it was a the, stupid it's acronym. I, I think yeah. it's strategic, powered. Strategic he has artificially a small reactor. intelligent nuclear transport. He's it's how he's powered. Okay, he does have a nuclear battery apparently. Yeah. So okay, all right. Speaking of which, lasers don't do that. No. Do you they, have a working knowledge of girls? They don't. Wait, <laughs> I'm just quoting some of Ben's lines. I I know what he did may have been bad. It was probably bad at the time. Still, we we were starting to get it in the 80s. We were. Yeah, we were. Okay. He just, um, Bulldike, shut up. I was like, wait, wait, <laughs> what? His lines made. So good. Oh, there's something I need 
to talk about. Okay. Please. Stephanie has killed so many kittens. There is always stuff on the stove. Cooking. There are always kittens on the stove. <laughs> and she just leaves. There's so many dead kittens under her house. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did any, nobody else notice that? Like when, when, when the, I... Johnny's throwing around spaghetti and boiling water and oh, pasta. Ha, ha. No, there's kittens next to burners. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I did notice. Let me thin that the kittens out. She's not a good actor. No, Ali Sheedy? No, no, she was not good. I, I think that's one of the reasons there why was one she had the quiet in part in in uh, the Breakfast Club up until like towards the VRN. She just kind of sat there being gothy. Who? Matthew? Uh, the, whoever played Ben, the guy who was racist. <sighs> Fisher Stevens. Yeah, he, Which he is did a great job. He was the best actor. I we'll talk about him a disagree, bit. disagree, actually. We, I think yeah. the, the voice actor for Johnny Five was the we, better we, actor. Yeah, because we'll, caricature is doing, you know, the fucking... But the thing is, they recorded all of his lines there with the puppeteer. They didn't go back no, into a sound. I think stage. he was the puppeteer because he is also a puppeteer. It, yeah, he's one of the like okay. dozen or so yeah. that, depending on what was going on. When she finds number five in her roach coach, I'm pretty sure they replaced his eyes with light bright. Did anyone else notice that he had like all these little light bright eyes? When it's like yeah. this orange glow coming from her roach coach, and she it, thinks it's yeah, aliens. Yeah, yeah, and he's he, he's he's coming up, and you like, think that's he's just, a just about behind to there. set that bitch on fire. Yeah. <laughs> but no, he doesn't. Apparently, early audiences booed and hissed at the screen, uh, watching Ali Sheedy kiss and hug a robot. Yeah, they did also not... the encyclopedia, ancient internet, mm -hmm. Google before Google. Yeah. Remember encyclopedias? Mm -hmm. Shit, man. I remember I moved to Portland in 2005, January of 2005, and I used an atlas to get here. I used a mm -hmm. road Thomas, map. Thomas Brothers? No, I went to uh, AAA, and oh, they yeah, custom built map, me yeah. a map of my entire route here. And this, I didn't have, you know, thousands of dollars so, for a GPS. Yeah, because yeah. that's how much they were. They because, were expensive. And, and now it's like any information that you want, you forget that uh, we had a. I don't. Yeah, I had a World Book Encyclopedia set. Yeah, so did I. It was a 1986 set. We had that <laughs> set for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, Every year, I remember yeah. as a kid, like we would get a knock on the door just before school start, before the school season, and it was someone selling a new set of. And with, for those like, of you who are under 21, updates. apparently they used to deliver milk and all kinds of old people shit that you don't care about <laughs> either. But, but, but <laughs> not, not just that. But in the early days of Google, mm -hmm. you couldn't quote internet sites no. as yeah. uh, sort of yeah. uh, as sourceable material in your annotations. On in any some classes, paper. you still can't. You still can't. Yeah, yeah. In like, and uh, a lot of classes will not allow you to use Wikipedia. Well, well yeah. most places that's... still don't use Wikipedia due to the contested nature of its information. It's true. However, you can use sources that you find on Wikipedia as long as you find them in their. So I write my notes in linear order yeah. as I as I, <laughs> I like I, I pause, write something, the movie plays again, right? So I I have just gone through. The goddamn it, get the kittens off the stove. Right? Okay. She finds the guy in the cuffs, goes back in, restarts cooking. There's still kittens on the <laughs> fucking stove. You know, all those cats? All dead. All dead. Every last one of them. <laughs> Probably because of the stove. <laughs> I, I wrote, God damn it, woman, turn off the stove or move the kittens. Oh my God. <laughs> oh God, I couldn't have done that movie. I'm so you know, you know, You know what I, what I wrote after that? <laughs> hmm. I like how mad she is about the dead grasshopper, but she kills kittens and probably cooks them. <laughs> so that's another line. Another line that's stuck in my head forever, and I quote it at least once a week. Disassemble! Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> Disassemble! I that one for me is like with you with, uh, uh, I am a, a meat, meat popsicle. popsicle. Yeah. Bye-bye, no, goofy woman. <laughs> I enjoyed repeatedly throwing you to the ground. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> it took a dozen people. I can't understand why they thought that was racist. <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> why? Did I pick this movie? No. Our Am I expected did. not to talk about it? <laughs> <laughs> this is what happened. It took 12 people to operate Johnny Five. Okay. 12 people to do all the moving, all the, all the articulations. It weighed, Johnny Five itself weighed approximately 250 pounds. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they had initially the, the production company said, let's, let's do stop motion. Let's make a tiny little plastic one and do stop motion. And then like green screen it on around P 
people and kind of like just set it up to where you can you can add it in later. I'm so glad they didn't because Ali Sheedy said in an interview that it it was it was emotionally difficult trying to connect with something that did not exist. And pretend, make it look like she was emotionally connecting. On Tell something it to that Sesame didn't. Street, lady. Wow. At least with Sesame Street, they're talking to puppets. No, tell it to whoever had to interact with goddamn Jar Jar Binks. Seriously. That poor actor. Have you guys heard his story? Yeah, he almost committed suicide. I know. The, like, the, he, the guy, guy that played Jar Jar Binks, because that was supposed to be his big break, and he didn't, like, do anything after. And he was atop a bridge after, and, and like, getting all these calls about how bad Jar Jar was, and he almost jumped off the off of a bridge. Oh, poor guy. I, no, yeah. I did read that. that oh, was, yeah. it's it's heartbreaking. I mean, he put his all into that character, just just what Lucas wanted, and you know his family wanted, and and he got so much kickback on. He said the biggest kick that he's gotten out of it, though, humor wise, since then, is the fan theory that Jar Jar is actually a Sith. Oh, Jar Jar is absolutely so. Oh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Have you seen the robot chicken one about that? <laughs> yeah. Annie, we used to go to play games now. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it was nice seeing all the places in Portland. That doesn't help our like listeners across the country and hopefully the world. Yeah. But uh, it was nice to see a lot of hometown stuff. No, it was good. Like, I, I did recognize a number of Goonies locations. Well, too. There, there, was the, there was a school that was in Kindergarten Cop. Uh, and there, there were a number. There were a number of, of locations. Yeah, Crown Point. Mm-hmm. Yes. The uh, you made a comment about the laser, and I didn't get a chance to say it then because we we kind of went on a tangent. The when the laser power ups did that sound familiar to you at, at all? Yes, but why? It's the proton pack going on yes! for Ghostbusters. Uh, Same exact sound. It that's was recycled. Why, yep. yep. Mm-hmm. I actually agree with Nova's response. Oh, hunting down Johnny Five. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, this is, yeah. this isn't like a kitchen implement. No, it's a it's nuclear not. powered death killer who's you know had now a little sentient. glitch and yeah. is, is malfunctioning. Yeah, because if you if you if you listen to Johnny Five in the beginning, he 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 speaks in the third person, you know, and then then he says, "I'm alive." He gets complete awareness. So he's not Johnny until the end, for the record. I, I understand yeah. that. I didn't remember that. Yeah, and but uh, watching it last night, it was. He didn't even use the name Johnny until the very yeah, end of the yeah. movie. When he talks about number five, we're probably number five. Mi- mixing it in our head with the second one too. Yeah, the second because we're of, of age to do that. Uh, Steve Gutenberg, uh, just in regards to the second one, he and Ali Sheedy because they didn't reprise their roles. There was like a ten second phone clip, apparently that was taken from uh, from this or later version of this one. Uh, he said that was one of the biggest mistakes of his career was not being in the sequel because he didn't think it was going to make any money, and they didn't produce a script. When he said, show me a script, I want to see what my part is. We don't, we haven't written it yet. We just want you to contract to it. Again, so bad. (laughs) Again, if you are lucky enough to play make believe for a living for millions of dollars or even for hundreds of thousands thousands of dollars, if you're one of those little ones who can't afford a new mansion every year, (laughs) fucking just do the work. Okay. The rest of us are working. Take the shit film. Well, own it. Make it yours. Stop being prima donna dickheads. Well, that's like James Spader. He's one of my favorite actors. And he's talked in interviews multiple times about how he is not at the level, uh, pay, payday-wise, is like Christian Bale, who gets $70, $80 million a movie, plus gross, plus points. So he will do a movie that pays his bills. And yeah. he will live on that. And he says, when I need to pay bills, I call up my agent. I say I need to make this much money to pay my bills for the year. Find me something. And that's why he did like a a, a season for The Office because he wasn't doing any movies. Yeah, and who cares? Yeah, he's still working. You're playing make-believe. Yeah. So way back at the beginning of this, I uh, I was going through all the, the endorsements mm-hmm. in this, all the products. Did anyone else pick up the credits? Watch through the credits? No, I didn't. I didn't do it. I watched second, all the scenes, but I didn't the read the second credit. second credit. Mm-hmm was producer sales association like this movie was made it's like directed by produced by starring or executive producer starring Mm -hmm. and then they roll right this was directed by and then what it was bought by this conglomerate of people that purchased well products that purchased a movie 
Yeah, it's a massive product placement. Yeah. You, you just kept seeing them all over the place. The Dr. Yeah. Pepper. Yeah. The one the that one I, I noticed a lot of them, but I think the one that stood out to me most was that big red and white Coleman cooler just sitting right there in the back. But it was in a, such an iconic location aimed so that it was facing the camera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they put that camp that there. It was just so obvious. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. I've, I've, I've written my way through the movie. I bitched about the kittens, which I still think, man, how many kittens died in the making of this movie? Unless that boiling pot, which you could see steam coming off of, was filled with dry ice. And that's a dead kitten because it was like inches from it. Oh, my God. It had a budget of $15 million. You mentioned that. That's uh, the, some bullshit, oh, man. Dr. We, Pepper has spent more than that on a Super Bowl commercial. Nike has spent more than that on a person. Uh, opening weekend. Nike it, owns people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a rabbit hole. You heard it here uh, first. <laughs> opening weekend, it only made five point three million. Air Jordans million. are people. The green. Five point seven million. You said five point three million on opening weekend. Now that's nineteen eighty six. So just that's for inflation. Too much. And gross over in the in the United States forty point three. So it did make its investment back. And uh, the biggest influence on Johnny's design was a piano playing robot from Japan's 1985 uh, Sakuba Expo. I'm maybe I'm getting that close. Uh, who had an eye to read the the piano music as it as it played? That was I the got, biggest design. I got one last thing to say about this, and I think Pixar took this Wally in, into uh, uh, into their lexicon, and that is if you're trying to make an inanimate thing animate, it's it's all the eyes. It's not the body language. It's not the hands. It's all the eyes. And the eyebrows in this and the, the eyelids and the, the opening and closing of the iris is what really made it, what, mm-hmm. what brought the robot to life. So, yeah. There, there was, eyebrows! Dogs have them. Cats don't. There That's why we like dogs and not cats. There was an actual lawsuit pending for Short Circuit 3 uh, going uh, the, the, against Wally, the studio that owns the rights to Johnny Five and Short Circuit was like, hey, Pixar, fuck you. You took our idea and oh. ran with it. And Pixar came back and said, no, we didn't. Here is every example, every little bit yeah. of robot yeah. that we stole from, I mean, borrowed from, and it didn't hold up in a, in a court of law because there was too much. There wasn't enough. Uh, this, com- this production company studio said, you took the tank treads. Well, he, Pixar Dude, get, went. Getting hit by lightning and coming alive. Come on now. Yeah. Pixar went, here's a dozen movies where robots have tank treads. I mean, there was there was a horrible 80s sci-fi movie where this this e- just this evil guy transplanted himself into like the lower part of a tank and drove around like killing people. Yeah. He looked like a boy. Servitors from Warhammer. Yeah. Those were in the 80s. So yeah. And that's all I got. Okay, yeah. So well, why don't why don't we take this thing to the table? I'm I'm done with this. Let's do it. Yeah. Th- thanks, listeners, for this one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is why this, this is why democracy doesn't work. You vote we... for things and you vote for shit and you do it. Every Speaking time. of which, we're gonna have a vote coming up soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you better get this one right. Stay what? tuned. Hi, this is Matthew. Thanks for listening. We wanted to take a moment to talk to you about uh, one of our sponsors, Guardian Games. Guardian Games has been with us since the very beginning of this show. Guardian Games is Portland's premier game store. They have magic miniatures, shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of RPGs, all the gaming swag, anything you could possibly want for your gaming experience. If you're ever in Portland and looking for a gaming store, Guardian Games is the biggest, most diverse store in Portland. You definitely owe it to yourself to go to Guardian Games. Well, now that we're going to bring this to the gaming table, Dusty, let's talk about the characters. Yes, we have, uh, to start off, we have Johnny Five himself, Tim Blaney, who was the voice of Johnny Five in both this movie and the second movie, and who also did a lot of the puppeteering for Johnny Five. Now, what else has he done? I know one off the top of my head. (laughs) He did Uh, Frank the Pug! Independence, not yeah. Independence Day, the uh, Men in Black. Better guy. Uh, Men in Black movies, he the, was, the only redeeming quality of all those movies was Frank the Pug. In my uh, opinion. He was also in Flight yeah. of the Navigator. He was, was a puppeteer. He, he was a puppeteer, but he was also yeah. a voice. You know the little 
thing that hung upside down that went, Wah. yeah, that was, he him. was that was him. Ah. Yeah, that was him. That's a movie that I would love to do one day, but I don't at the same time for fear that it ends up being yeah, a shitty. It, it, this, it goes this way. Yeah. Uh, he was also in the SpongeBob SquarePants movie as Goofy Goober. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then he was, uh, he did Men in Black 3. He played Worm. Yeah, yeah, but he was also Frank the Pug. Yeah, he was also Frank the Pug. <laughs> God. Frank the Pug. Well, uh, what would you say his alignment is, Matthew? Dusty? Uh, chaotic good. It, totally, yeah, chaotic. Chaotic good. He's not lawful. See, here's an interesting one in that I would say he is teenager. It's well, hard kid, younger. Just kid. Or younger. He's a kid. It's hard to tell his alignment. I, I think chaotic good is kid until you get back to like three to four where it's chaotic evil. <laughs> that, that's, that's what children are. Essentially. I think someone once said to me that basically before kids go to school and they learn ethics. Yeah, they're wild fucking they're animals. Tiny Hitlers. Yeah. Is what they're, it was. they're just yeah. awful creatures. Yep. I'll, I'll agree with that. Chaotic good. That works. All right. And then we round uh, out into Ali Sheedy. Who played Stephanie Speck? Oh, oh lawful good. Sure. Very lawful good. Now, yeah, she, there's a couple moments that actually yeah. sold it, like uh, when you're lying, you're lying again. I mean, just, you know, the truth is very important to her. If you do not know who Ali Sheedy is, she was in The Breakfast Club, as we said earlier, as the goth girl, uh, Alice. Where Reynolds. she didn't speak much. No, not until the very end, where she said she had a penchant for vodka. Uh, and she. A Yes, and then she played opposite Matthew Broderick in War Games in 1983. Love that movie. It's a great movie. Yeah. I don't remember her character much at all in that film. She was only in like 95% of the movie. Exactly. That, that's saying a lot. I don't remember her. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm with him yeah. on this one. No, okay, that's yep. fine. She's an unmemorable actress. Yeah. She's a St. Elmo's Fire. And... Uh, we'll go with uh, Bad Boys, not the not the 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 cop movie that was done here with Will Smith. No, this was this was done with Sean Penn back in 1983, where Sean Penn was put in jail in a juvie juvie hall. That Bad Boys. I was three. I didn't see it. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> maybe you should watch a movie. Oh, oh. <laughs> I did. I watched I'm, this when it I, came out in the theater. I'm going with Lawful Good, man. Yeah, yeah she's Lawful, lawful Good. good. And then we have uh, Steve Gutenberg as Newton Crosby, PhD designer of Johnny Newton Five. Crosby. Fucking chaotic evil. No, chaotic good. I'm just kidding. <sighs> yeah, I think everybody here is good. Um, the the, except the, for Frank well, the X. The main. Yeah, well, he's an NPC. It's, there's, only, there's only two more characters, yes. and then you're NPCs. NPCs have alignment. No, I understand that, but... Okay, I want to go back. I want to do something new this time. I want okay. to add a little flavor to this. I'm going to start back with Journey 5. I was thinking about this the other day. I'd like to do alignments, but I also want to... Let's state the character's motivation in this movie. What is Journey 5 trying to do? Survive. Because and this is going to inform yeah. the themes when we take this to the table of what kind of game yeah, you want to do. Yeah, he's just trying to be alive. So Johnny's thing is survival. Yeah, uh, his thing is survival. Okay. That and uh, to pull down his first human chick. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Ali, sure, why not? Ali Sheedy's We're is, playing is, that kind of game, I guess, with Matthew here. Ali Sheedy's is to... I try and charm the barmaid. <laughs> is to mother and protect. So you think her goal is mothering? Yeah, I, the protection. Well, okay. So initially, initially she's all like, aliens, I'll take me to your leader. Yeah, but so, I mean, look at all the fucking animals she's trying to save. Uh, mm -hmm. True. I mean, okay. she might be eating them later, but <laughs> I, I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt that it's inadvertent. She just it doesn't dies, realize so you might as well eat it. It doesn't realize that cat kitten with fire. <laughs> so if this were a D and D, she'd have a really low wisdom score. Yeah, yeah, like six. <laughs> Okay, so Newton, Newton Crosby. Newton Crosby. We said he's cat at good. What what uh, is his motivation in this? Tinkerer. Well, that's his... oh, he he wants to get his creation back, yeah. and then after he finds out that it's actually alive, he'll go to any lengths to protect it. Okay, okay, I like that. Yeah, right. yeah. And then we have uh, Fisher Stevens playing Ben, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce Lawful the last good. name. Yes, Awful good. Every, every time he, he he's, is he's the, being he is dragged, the conscience of this movie. Being... He's being dragged into all of this. He's he, trying to yeah, does talk not his friend out of it he, every step of the way. He, he, he does enjoy to throwing her to the ground. Tries but to tell but him that's not unlawful. It's true. 
I mean, some girls are into that. You could be lawful good into some kinky shit. So he, yeah, I would Tell say lawful it. good. That makes sense. That works for him. Yeah. What? Now, what it, his it, motivation be throughout this movie. What's that character trying to do? He's trying to get laid. Yeah. He talks about it the whole movie, yeah. and <laughs> he does. <laughs> That is his motivation. But he when doesn't he try to, to... He just crimp, says it in... Complete in, you know, strange... They're complete strangers. That's what he's talking Indian about. metaphors. But he also doesn't try to cramp his bro style. So well, he's a friend. He's not yeah. so blinded by his, his lust that he is willing to... Oh, yeah. He's respectfully trying to get is, laid by throwing women to the ground. Essentially, in this movie, he's a wingman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, who's if, next? If you don't know any other movies that he has been in real quick, uh, he was in My Science Project. Uh, which is it's actually, I loved that yeah, movie. That is a that good was movie. a fun one. Yeah, that was a yeah. fun movie. Uh, and then just I'm just gonna go through the list of movies you guys might have heard him. Fisher in. Stevens, right? Yes, yeah. Super Mario Brothers. Oh God, uh, Hackers. He was the bad guy in Hackers. It was gonna turn. Oh my God, he was. Yep, he was the was, plague. Yeah, with the with the tanker that he was gonna turn over and the fuck me, he was. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Huh. I've referenced that like three <laughs> times in this recording. <laughs> yes. So well, you said I. hackers. You didn't say who he was. I kept saying plague. I don't remember his fucking name. <laughs> He's the guy with the cool keyboard. He's been in a lot of movies, actually. Man, uh, he got chubby. Uh, the Grand Budapest Hotel. He was chubby in hackers. Uh, He's he an award winning director. Yeah, he was in Hail Caesar also. Yep. Isle of Dogs. Fisher Stevens is an accomplished actor and director. Yep. He's, he's done well with his life. He's been in a lot of television also. What has Steve Gutenberg done in the last decade? Because <laughs> that's a name that you sort of forgot after the 80s. Uh, didn't he uh, become the guy from Mad About You? Aren't that, isn't that essentially basically, the same guy? Yeah. So he. Paul Reiser. Ry- yeah, well, aren't they basically just the same guy? Well, Paul Reiser. He, yeah. Essentially. More or less. <laughs> yeah. yeah he, did, he did most all of the Police Academy movies. Yeah. Cocoon. Uh, which I do like that movie. Amazon Women on the Moon, High Spirits, Three Men and a Little Lady, Three Men and a Baby too. Three Men and a Baby as well. Um, you know, here's the thing though. I remember reading at some point when we were watching this movie about like some act, some casting choices and how people would have cast the characters different because Steve Gutenberg was too attractive and charming. It's interesting when someone like Steve Gutenberg, who's an attractive, charming person, yes. He had a good smile. He had a friendly face. He was an attractive chart. He was essentially a dad. He was a, 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 a cute dad. But if you look at Three Men and a Baby, he's the least attractive, traditionally, of the three there. There's Tom Selleck and Ted Danson, both mm-hmm. of which were billed as very attractive Very attractive people. men yeah. at the time, yes. He's also Have you done- seen that one of Selleck on the bearskin rug in front of the fire? Yeah. yeah. That's some good shit right there. He's that also mustache. been in a lot of, of television. <laughs> that body stash. He did a lot of uh, <laughs> the show According to Jim. He played in Sons of Liber- Liberty. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lava, is- Lava Lantula, which yeah. is a horrible movie. A movie about a lava lamp. Yep. And Sharknado 4, The Fourth Awakens. God, those Jared were great- in that movie? <laughs> those were great movies. I don't care what people say. Oh, no. they're, they're what they are, they, what they are, they are good. All right, and then we move on to Austin Pendleton, who played Dr. Howard Marner, president of Nova Robotics. I would uh, say that was Howard Lawful Good. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't a villain. No, he was no. simply the boss who was more concerned with money. He was trying to regain control. Too. Yeah, I mean, they, they yeah. were breaking his rules. He, well, I, I wouldn't say good because he did set him up several times. It's like, hey. I want to send you to this meeting place. I promise he won't be there. He paid and he goes for to the, it. And he goes it's to the, his. He it's goes his to the machine. Meeting, but he goes to the meeting place, and everyone there is exactly the people that he told Newton wouldn't be there. That's not good. Lawful neutral, then. You can I'll lie to lawful, heretics. Definitely lawful <laughs> neutral. I've been playing too much Warhammer. I would say palladium unprincipled. <laughs> because I do think palladium has better alignments than Agreed. D&D. But it's yeah. just harder to, yeah, yeah. He has a he has a fairly prolific. Uh, he, he's history. been in a lot of stuff. He was yeah. also the, he was in everything in the eighties, just like the actual villain was yeah. in everything in the eighties. What was that guy's name? Yeah, the fucking wannabe general with the uh, fucking uh, whistle. Right hard or die hard or whatever or his name was. Boner he was or whatever the fuck. <laughs> scrotum. <laughs> scrotum. 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 It was scroter. Scroter. And they yeah. kept calling him scrotum, or at least Ben kept calling him scrotum. So I would say that, I would say that he was kind of lawful evil because he took 
joy and blowing shit up. I was gonna go with chaotic neutral. I could go with that too because he was yeah. he was breaking orders that were given to him by his higher up just to go out of his way to fuck with him. You make a good point. I was using lawful evil by default, but I think I know. Works I know you that. guys both do that. I don't. No, no, no. You see, villain, you just go. No, I think there. Dusty is just like everything is chaotic. Good. No. <laughs> Don't attempt to shift it off on Dusty. That's like, <laughs> that's like kicking a pussy. So what, who, was the, <laughs> who was the actor who played Scrotum? Uh, G.W. Bailey, who he actually... He oh, played, I don't like him because he does the acronym thing. Fuck him. He Next. played, he played uh, Steve Gutenberg's police boss in the Police Academy yeah. movies. Oh, yeah. he's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, he was also in Mannequin with, with James Spader. He, Has he ever played a nice person? <laughs> Not that I remember. Uh, Unless see. he played like a, he played in Mash, so that was he was a nice guy in. Mash. Wait, wait, in Mash? Yeah, he was. Uh, he was in Mash. Yeah, he was the movie or the show? Sergeant Luther Rizzo, in the TV series. In one episode? Yeah, that couldn't have been. Uh, okay. That was not a recurring because yeah. I've watched Mash a couple of times. I, I like don't it. remember him. Yeah, so I think that's everybody. I don't think we have anybody left. Uh, boyfriend, Ch- chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral. Who yeah, fucking he's a cares? Shit. Yeah. He's a shit. Yeah, the, the the rest of the cast are all NPCs. No. Okay. And of course, the military guys' motivation was blow shit up. That's all military guys. It's pretty much from the beginning of the movie to the end of it. Well, blow we, shit up. I mean, that and serve and follow orders. But I mean, okay. Poor but he didn't really follow. That'll orders fly that well, well locally, but not so well in the Midwest, guys. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we're trying to have we're trying to have more than a Portland podcast here. <laughs> Well, Matthew. Well, we're big in Vietnam, so. And I'm sure in Vietnam they want to hear good things about the American <laughs> soldier. But in Vietnam, they do want to hear where the story's going next. Oh, uh, okay. So this can go two ways. You can either literally play the people in here, which is uh, the, the fucking Crosby, Stephanie, Nash. and Johnny. Nash? Sorry, Crosby, Stephanie, Nash. Nash. Crosby, Stephanie, <laughs> Nash. Oh, it was bad. I love it. I got I my pizza. It. I mode. liked it. I liked it. <laughs> uh, you you can either play them because they they're headed to Montana to his his forty acres with a million fucking feral pets that will be eaten by coyotes, <laughs> or okay. or by her because they're gonna or come by in. her, <laughs> <laughs> or Johnny's gonna use them for target practice with that laser on his yeah. shoulder. Yeah, uh, they take refuge at, Cros- at uh, Crosby's land and build a compound. Because that's what you do in Montana. If you have acreage, you build a compound. And then the apocalypse happens. <laughs> Wait, sorry, different story. Why not? You I, got I, your I, own nuclear reactor yeah. in this robot. <laughs> I, I would. He'll power fucking every. Just plug him in. Give him. Plug him in and give him. Let, let Google come around and let him just start playing on Google. He'll be fine. But the best part is, he's only got one button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just. Boop on, <laughs> boop off. It's, you have to go into a startup body. sequence, yeah. nothing. Yeah. You just got to make sure to pull off his eyebrows first. <laughs> the little fucking butterfly, the butterfly wings. <laughs> uh, anyway, a mailman or something will see Johnny Five cavorting around. Uh, and, you know, rumors will start getting around. They don't get mail in the country. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um. They would, uh, Nova would eventually investigate. That's scenario number one. The one I want to play is find the robot where you play the private security the firm and thing? or the military. I don't know, Dusty. <laughs> How's your love life? Is, is find the robot a sex thing? Let's just ask. Do flashlights vibrate now? Is that what he's trying to tell me? I'm looking uh, at you for answers because I know you know. <laughs> Some of them do. <laughs> All right. It depends on whether or not you're getting a brand name flashlight or one of those knockoffs. <laughs> Let me take you to my browsing history, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would much rather play a hunter-killer team off to stop this nuclear-powered weapon of death and destruction robot. Um, some sort of uh, tracking game. Yeah, ninjas and super spies would do it. But basically, you have to track them back to the compound. I'm just going to fill up all of this while you guys both eat pizza at the same time. <laughs> just going to kind of keep on going while you both chew. It's so good. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I would definitely, if I was playing this, though, it would be a tracking team trying to track down the rogue doctor, maybe even for the military, because it's still it's still sentience that he has created. He's created a vehicle for sentience. You just have to run a lot of current through it. 
So, I mean, that can be useful in a number of decision-making ways on a battlefield, more than just remote control. So the government is definitely going to want them. Maybe not so much to pull in number five, but to get, once again, to get him and disassemble him. Not to fix him, but to find out how he became what he became. Because if you have a decent decision-making process, you can stick it in a submarine. You can stick it in a spacecraft. It would revolutionize everything. So I would want to play that team, trying to take down this errant robot. So basically, it's like a rainbow sixing it. Yeah. But without the that. box. That would be good. I just came up with a campaign idea while you were talking. Do it. While you were stalling and I was munching on pizza. <laughs> Thanks, listeners and patrons, for the pizza. The game opens up. One player is playing Johnny Five. You are now essentially king of this meadow. You are given this entire 40-acre plot to roam around and learn and, and input, input, input. One day, you're out exploring, and you fall into a hole. You go into an area that you're not really supposed to go into, but you fall into this hole and find yourself in this cave. But when you your senses come to and your your, your systems all, like, re, reconfigure themselves, you're in a bunker surrounded by other robots all in states of disassemble but there's a few of them that aren't they look like you but cruder versions i I like this wait 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 wait. you start to go to each of them and press the button so is crosby the mad scientist the evil you activate them and the other and they start screaming (laughs) yes and they come online now disassemble because Suddenly you Father, realize why <laughs> this has been going on for much longer than the movie wants you to believe. I like Crosby's okay. whole okay. thing I, is he's not a simple scientist. He has too much charisma. He has so much charisma that he's he is. He's, he's had to dumb it down. He's actually a sociopath. He has been building robots with the hope that one of them would come alive one day and killing them for fun. Putting them through destruction tests to see which one will spark. And now you're that one that he has been one day hoping. You are to the chosen one. Bring back to his lair. That's a good idea. That's yeah. way better than mine. And so now no, admit it, you it are a group of Johnny Five, consistent of Johnny Five and a, a handful of and randomly. Four, three, two, one. Ran, not well. Johnny. Yeah. 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 A one B seven. What was it called? The Squire. The 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 Saint. Not saints. saints. These aren't yeah. saints. These were pre-saints. These were his. These are bishops. Yeah. These are bishops and pawns. And whatever. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Infantry. Sex helper. On yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, power bottom. Battle infantry <laughs> special. Okay, so you find all of these other robots and you bring them online. Those are the other player characters. Listeners, and what now would, you have what, to find it, your way out of this fucking bunker dungeon i I have a task for listeners what would i like bunker dungeon yeah what would pawn and bishop or even rook what would that acronym out to? yeah give us your best bishop queen king what's that acronym out to but we really want bishop yeah that's that's the key okay so a horror game is not what i was suggesting but i like it better (laughs) is there a movie for saw because here's the thing you have this guy, right? You know, we did no, 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 saw, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. God, fuck that one. That was a rough one. But you have this guy, right? And he wakes up in the bunker. But the test isn't over. The bunker is just the start of oh the my test. Oh, oh, this just is, could... uh, yes. Ah! Yeah. See, this is why I do this podcast. Yeah, yeah. You build, I build, you build. <laughs> All right. I, so, I did Dusty builds sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why don't you build this? <laughs> That was uncalled for. <laughs> God. Even for me, that's too much. Um, but I'm I'm building with you, bro. I thank you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, don't touch me. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Friends. <laughs> 25 alive. No, touch me there. No, I, I, I think that's actually the way to do it. That's really good, man. And you could use something like Dungeon Crawl Classics for that, where, tell you what, we're each going to roll up 20 failed robots. Ooh. <laughs> and Johnny Five is not even the player character. 
No, no. All of your PCs have been awakened by Johnny Five, who's like, hey, I need you to help me find my way out of here. And you're all like, yeah. input. <laughs> and he is the god. Oh, my God. The no, he's and just the quest giver. He is, no, no, no. He's just the quest giver. Image. He's the quest giver. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but he, well, yeah, he's okay. the he is the DM's control. He's the NPC who so, kind of nudges uh, you. Dear listeners, if you run this game, please let us Fucking know how it goes. Or yeah, something. yeah, so send throw it to a camcorder us. on the table because I might do this at a convention someday and just not That's tell not anybody yeah. what this is. And at the end of it, when you come out, Johnny, be like, Johnny Five alive, and then take your heart. <laughs> Like a Highlander. Yes. <laughs> there can be only one. This did not go in the a direction. Dis- a destruction <laughs> test for sentience might work, though. That's not That's not the world's worst idea. Yeah. It's like if you have a significant amount and it's not happening, that's because it's not threatened. It's oh not God. adapting to a situation. Yeah, so how do, you build, how do you build life? You force it to adapt or die. We call that evolution. But if you want to do it in your lifetime, well, you just got to set up a weird little dungeon on your compound mm-hmm. now, don't you? <laughs> yeah. You've got 40 acres above and below ground. You're good. <laughs> Fuck, oh it's God. not like anyone's looking for <laughs> him. The dungeon is a mega dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> so Newton Crosby wanted to create life. I want to go back and change his alignment. <laughs> but in order, <laughs> in order, his goal wasn't just to create life. His goal was to create life. And find that, out. That could then create yeah. life. Mm-hmm. And destroy it. So his, the test, the game, his test was bringing Johnny here, hoping Johnny would find the dungeon and awaken the failed prototypes and turn them into something glorious. And as he comes out, he, he says, he has, I am become death. No, 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 no. <laughs> I have led my people through the wastelands <laughs> and the deserts, through the darkling caves. There's. And he he rises, and the the robots write a book about him, and they use him as an excuse to murder the humans. So, dear listeners, we've just given you a campaign, yeah, an epic campaign, right which is going to have one hell of a punchline. You just got to see it through to the end. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I I mean, I'd I'd play that one. I would too. It's so much better than I thought I was going to bring tonight. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that was that was good kicking back and forth. <laughs> Honestly, what I was going to bring, we talked about on the Transformers episode. It's a game called Robotic Age. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. the reason I'm jumping right into the game is because as part of the whole talk about the motivations of the characters in the beginning, that's going to help us establish the themes going forward so that we're not going to need to sit and wax nostalgic about what we're looking at. We're looking at a robot that wants to be free. We're looking at a scientist that wants to get his creation back and protect it. And a wingman. Or does he? <laughs> <laughs> and then the friend that the, the sudden friend that wants to protect it so i do want to give a brief mention here to robotic age i liked that when we went yeah. over it yeah. for transformers i did like that that gaming system the reason i'm bringing this up is because robotic age has built into it how to play short circuit yeah uh or if you've ever watched that television show almost human mm-hmm. with uh carl urban carl urban or and westwood westwood yeah any of the ga- games, any of those shows that deal with characters who are both robots and humans mixed together. Oh, by this, the way, Johnny yeah. Five uh, uh, Short Circuit is a kids movie. Westwood is not. So yeah. <laughs> Westworld. 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 Excuse yeah. me. If you're if you're looking for one to show your kids. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Do not show Westworld to your children. Yeah, don't 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 do that. Uh, Robotic Age is done by Preston Poland of True in One Productions. Uh, it was a Kickstarter game. I really like it. It's fun. It's simple. It's got androids. It's got humans. It's got cyborgs. It's got transhumans. And it's got straight up robots. This is the kind of game that if you want to just sit down and do a traditional do you fail or do you succeed yeah. kind mm-hmm. of pass roll single die system, it's percentile based. It can cover With you. With all the traps that are going on in the dungeon of sentience, <laughs> I think you'd, you'd need something like that. Or D20 Modern. D20 dungeon Modern would work. Crawl classics is what i would use really for my dungeon no way why not because the the monsters make no sense what are you talking about why not the oh, giant toad the followed by the basilisk followed by the minotaur followed by the beholder followed by the dungeon or are you crawl just classics. talking the mechanics of dungeon i'm crawl talking classics. about using the dungeon crawl classics core mechanic the funnel for oh, i'm talking okay. about for the fucking mega dungeon that we just came up with a minute ago oh, the, okay the core the, the grinder okay. there's there's science fiction versions of it yeah star crawl there's uh the post-apocalyptic oh, one. okay yeah. i didn't know that i thought character. you were just talking it's about just like, like the meat grinder one the tomb of undermountain or whatever yeah. oh no 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 no, no. Right. i would not use 
No, no, like, no. Why, why, why would you do well, that? Oh, honestly, for something like that, I don't I, know why the bugbear lives next to the beholder. <laughs> I just don't know. Go with it. They're in. They're don't on the question outs. the writer. <laughs> they used to date. They separate it. They're reconsidering it. Oh, you just killed the bugbear, so the beholder's extra pissed now. I would use Dungeon Crawl Classics, the the funnel system, because it creates that zero level destruction derby that I think a really good dungeon of a mad scientist needs. Yeah. Every room, at least half the party's going to die <laughs> until you get to the end. And, and that's only run one on left. what system? Dungeon Crawl Classics is a d20 based system it's rooted but they've had it all the way back since second ed right well so dcc okay here's here's the story dcc started if if i remember correctly by a company called goodman games yeah and the, what they did is they printed second ed or for, no not even it was, second it was ed. first and then they, they printed really started modules in, in the style of first ed but aimed at third edition D D. No, it's before that. They no, did it before no, that, Goodman too. Goodman Games, the dun- what, what's called Dungeon Crawl Classics, started as the modules with an old-school feel aimed at modern, aimed at 3rd Ed. And then they realized oh, that 3rd Ed, right, yeah. Ed didn't work for their system. or for their, They bounced it over to 20. Well, what they did is they took the open gaming license and then stripped it down, took that system, stripped it down into something that looked like original D and D, and they in fact they're they're the back of the book says it's time to party like it's nineteen seventy nine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I have a stack of those things. Yeah, they're they're amazing. And Goodman Games just had a booth at this convention that I was at last week in GameStorm. This is the first time I saw an actual Goodman Games booth there. Oh, nice! And I walked past it. I was on my way to another booth. I walked past it, stopped, stepped backwards, <laughs> <laughs> turned, and spent. All my money at their booth instead. <laughs> I got a t-shirt with a wizard flying a 70s van. I got all nice. kind of cool books. I got bags. I got cool-ass dice. Goodman Games is where it's at. So I would run Dungeon Crawl Classics or something rooted in it. There's a number of spinoff campaign settings that uh, have their own classes. There's Mutant Crawl Classics, which is like yeah. this crow magnum future everybody's a hunter or a gatherer kind of thing. There's American Survival Guide, which is... Uh, Thunder the Barbarian, essentially. There's Star Crawl Classics. There's there's so many different flavors of Amer- of of DCC, and I'm quite positive we can make one work for a bunch of failed robotic experiments being forced marched to their death, saw style, by an insane mad robot. <sighs> because that's- but it's it's just it's just to figure out life though. His his motives are are pure. Oh yeah, he doesn't understand that they're being because they can be. Re- he oh, he's reassembling them every time. <laughs> he's not wiping their core, their memory core. Yeah, let's 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 darken oh my this shit God, up a bit. This is just, this is a- I remember all my life. <laughs> oh, and here's another thing: they all hive mind into each other, so they all remember each other's experiences. No, 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 that's too far. No, were, that's you, not you were, too you far. You were good with the code. You were good with the code because if they hive mind. It's not achieving sentience. It's achieving a hive. Yeah, okay. All right. Stop while you're ahead. Is the Borg sentient? We're going to go Star Trek twice, huh? I'm All right. curious. Do you think the Borg is sentient? Yeah. But it's a hive. Yeah, but that's not, that's not what a human no, see, would create at, at, in the 1980s. Okay. Because everything they do is for the good of the hive. They are always we, us. There is never an I, except for but seven the Borg, Which nine. is the Borg queen is sentient. So everything else is an extension of the queen? Yeah. Okay. It's it's one life form and not a race. So Johnny's just trying to better himself. I want to play this game yeah, so bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, yeah I, don't, I don't have anything else on this. I, I mm. think I was going to talk more about Robotic Age, but if you want to hear more about that game, listen to listeners, Transformers. Go back to the Transformers episode. It was a good episode. We even had some music in it from the Cybertronic Spree. We yeah, sang. Those guys were yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. They have a new song out. Did you see it? They have popped up on of, YouTube. Yeah. 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 I, I subscribed to their feed, as they you do. should too. They are a rock do we, band. Do we have a Friends of uh, a, a Friends of Have Movies Will Game? I mean, we, we, if we not, we should. Will I mean, soon. All right. <laughs> yeah, we should actually put that out. There, there are people who have taken their time out and like really mm-hmm. helped us out, and we should. We, we should do the same. We we should. Yeah. 
That's all, all right. I got. Yeah. Cheers. All right. So it's a uh, short fucking circuit. <laughs> and but and it, the robotic it, it, age. However, it some good to stuff. play this fucking thing sounds <laughs> yeah. just evil, and I can't wait. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I was Matthew, and I'm Dusty, and I'm Nathaniel. And once again, we want to ask you to join us on our various online communities. Hit us up on Facebook, MySpace. Drop Twitter. into <laughs> MySpace. I should set up a MySpace page just because I just can. Because I got yeah, Twitter. We have a Discord channel where you can drop in and communicate with us. We also have an active Patreon. We, and you're like the only person I know on MeWe. Like everyone went over there and then nothing happened. Yeah, Google <laughs> Plus just died two days ago uh, and I'm still sad from it. And MeWe what just was the one isn't before the MeWe? It was it was like it had a black and white logo and like five oh. years ago everyone was saying oh, this fuck. is gonna be the next first book. And it Diaspora. Died. Diaspora. No, 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 no. no. It was something it was else called. It was real simple. It was yeah. a simple name. Macedon? No, no, it was very, very simple. They, you know what I'm talking so about? I know what yeah. you're talking about because I even signed up oh, for it. Oh, Ello. That's, yes, that's what it was. That's yeah. It. Yeah, it, I was into it for a week and then I was like, I'm over this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, anyway, we have a lot of online presence and also join our Patreon. We have a lot of bonus stuff on there. Oh, incidentally, guys, I don't know if you got it from the inference, but today I got my pizza, which was my number one goal. There should be pictures of my happy, happy face shoving pizza into it. I don't know where Dusty's going to put I'm gonna those. Put him up, I'm going to put them up on our Facebook page. And stick around after our credits for a little bit of bonus stuff of Matthew excitedly reading your name. Oh. <laughs> but also, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, thanks, Patreons. Yeah, you, thank you. you. You got me my pizza. No, I never I mean, thought I'd get there. We, 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 we started this, and it was kind of just putting it out into the ether, and then people were like, uh, how do we get in contact with you if we want to? Yeah. And we got yeah. a few people, and then we got a few more people, and we got even more people, and now there's yeah, a Rex, good Donnie, chunk Sylvia, of, you guys are awesome. Yeah, you all have gone a, the extra mile. Yeah, I, 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 I see my, whenever I go down to see in the Phoenix, I see my friends that listen regularly. Unfortunately, they don't, like, post comments or anything, but they listen. They always tell me it's a good show. Uh, a friend of mine that's really big into the gaming scene down there, he loves the games that we talk about. So my mom thinks it's really good, but yeah, she actually too. doesn't because I don't let my mom listen to this shit. <laughs> Can't imagine why my not. brother's out in, in Lake Tahoe. He listens to it every time it comes up. So. But, but I did when I published my first book. I did send her a copy so she, and with a clip so yeah. she could attach that shit to her microwave. Nice. <laughs> her refrigerator. Anyway, uh, yep, yeah, have a movie school game. Hey, uh, do we have any announcements for the next one? Were we going to do a vote on something? We got a vote coming up, and it's going to be uh, Tarantino. Tarantino. We're going to do a Tarantino Finally poll. Doing it. Yeah. But uh, also, we're taking a break for the month of April. This is recorded a little bit late because we had a scheduling mix up. So you're not going to hear us again for a month. Womp, womp, so listen womp. to some of that bonus stuff. I'm going to be popping out. Stay tuned. And uh, we'll will, see bon- will bonus stuff be coming out on a regular feed? That will be coming out on both the regular feed and the Patreon. Stuff. Okay, I'm going to kind of dole so it you'll out. Get, you'll get the goodness. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get some hints on the regular feed and some good stuff on the Patreon. Okay. All right. Well, thanks as always, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the seed, and we love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear. Please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello, drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production. And our episodes are distributed under CCBYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Guys, guys, it happened. I got my pizza. I wanted one thing from day one of this podcast. I wanted to make enough money to buy one hot and ready pizza from Little Caesars. Hot and ready. That was all I so wanted. So hot. So ready. So ready. That is, that is the, the, the pinnacle of my goals. Mm-hmm. And today I have received my pizza. Gentlemen, would, would, would you like a slice of pizza? The pizza 
that have movies will game podcast has given us i want to clue you in on something here matthew what i stole a slice while you weren't looking cox <laughs> <laughs> so uh thank you thank you for the slice all right well here's pizza anyway you ungrateful jerks <laughs> seriously though thank you thank um, you um hey i want to give a quick shout out to some of our uh, biggest contributors on our patreon uh sylvia stratton donald peck rex barkdahl you guys are the best thank you so much i didn't ask for much all i wanted was a hot and ready pizza and you guys really came through thank you so much and all the people who have tipped uh in our in our tip bucket you guys are the best very much so thank you oh yeah i'm gonna stop praising you and eat now 